Hello! Welcome to episode 22 of Movies and Us. I'm TJ. And I'm Marcus. It's very nice to meet you guys. Uh, oh. And this is the review show that reviews genre movies from the beginning sometimes. And by the terribleness of his pun, in this one we're going into 1997 Batman and Robin. I almost said Batman Forever. That's not as bad as this one. No, no. Batman Forever was way better. <laughs> but did my pun uh, freeze you in your tracks? Yes, it did. <laughs> it certainly did. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to do too many puns this episode. No, Just... I think with this movie punned out everything in the universe. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so this movie is two hours and four minutes. That's it? For like f- and two days. F- feel like forever. It was directed by Jules Sch- Schumacher, written by <laughs> Akiva Goldsman, produced by Peter McGregory Scott, starring Arnold Schu- Schwarzenegger, George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell, O'Donnell, Uma Thurman, Alicia Silverstone, Michael Goh, Pat Hingle, and Ellie McPherson. Again, another star-studded cast that just couldn't save this one. One star-studded cast saved it. The other one couldn't hold it together. Yeah, nope. Not even a little bit. This movie had a $125 million budget, but only grossed $238 million worldwide. The lowest of all the Batman movies. Even compared to the newer ones at the time of this recording. Yeah, so this was considered a disaster. In fact, they canceled a fifth playing movie because of how poorly this one did. Which is very telling of how bad this movie is. And I came in I came in to this review excited and with open eyes and open mind. Uh-huh. I didn't. I remembered. <laughs> Anyhow, this is 1997. You got our stupid list for us? I do have a great list for us. Good year for movies. Like, wow, guess, guess what? I just saw uh, number 33 on this list. I'm not guessing anything. Spawn. Wow, Starship Troopers number 34. Holy crap. We'll get the <laughs> Spawn about, I don't know, 100 episodes from now. <laughs> yeah, wow. Fifth Element, man. Came out this year. 25th. Anaconda, 23, which that's a movie I helped inspire. That movie should be burnt of all Again? copies of it. Anaconda? Yes. That movie inspired me to get into what I like doing, TJ. It, it should all copies of it should be burnt. <laughs> all snakes should be killed and murdered. And well, I'll keep. They should. They should not exist in this world. They are evil incarnate. Oh, I forgot you're afraid of snakes. That's why. It's like, that's not that bad. It's a bad movie, but it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, number 27, I'm going to mention this Mention the Saint, because we're going to talk about that later, I assume. Uh, well, we can talk about it now. Um, George Clooney is Batman in this one, because Val Kilmer had... Uh, signed on for The Saint, but because of the success of Batman Forever, Warner Brothers decided to fast-track this movie, which caused him to have scheduling conflicts. However, I also read that Schumacher and Kilmer kind of had problems, and he kind of quit, and they kind of fired him. Understandable. He, he kind of saved himself from this movie, I guess. Yeah, he kind of did. Although, I think he might have... He, I think he would have helped it. Uh, he would have helped a lot Honestly, more. looking back on rewatching this, George Clooney's not as bad as I remember him. No, see, I thought he was worse than what I remember. No, when he's Bruce Wayne, he's not terrible at this when he has to play sad and stuff because there's two movies going on here (laughs) at the time. There's the ridiculous toy commercial that's going on and then everything to do with Alfred, which actually isn't bad. Oh, I hated his subplot. I hate it. Oh, like you, okay, like you were saying, the him, George Clooney, everyone else acting sad around it, good, passable. Yeah. But just the story arc itself, the line, like, I, just, I hated oh, it. Oh, I hated it so don't much. Get, don't get me, we'll get to the contrivances <laughs> of the actual story plot. Don't I'm worry. So bad. But the acting that went into it was really good. Yes, I agree with that. Like, George Clooney has the voice for Batman. He, he's not, he was walking through it, though, for me. Like, watching him act, like, he was just, yeah, I'm just doing George Clooney stuff right now. Here's my little well, head. Not here's my little like George Clooney smirking, yep. But he's in this movie. I don't blame him. That that too. If if he was given a good director and good like <laughs> right, I think he would have been. A, I, I think he could have been a great Batman if they would have given him a Batman movie and not a toy commercial. That's the thing. He could have been, but he wasn't. This was right. A, yeah, uh, and I, I don't want to bash him. I don't want to be on that train. Well, obviously, yeah, but, but no, just, but from what I saw, I was like, man, this isn't because. I, I know George Clooney is a good actor. I've seen him act in really good movies. Oh, yeah. And I know he can pull it off. And in some parts of this movie, he is really good. Yes. But there's a lot of parts you see him just like, man, why am I doing this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, I, have not, I don't want to be this bad, man. <laughs> 
Every time him and Chris O'Donnell had to do a pun, I could see their uh, their souls die a little bit. And the whole dumb, you love her, no, I love her. Like, uh, I hate... Okay, let's just see about this top ten list. Okay, so that was 27 for The Saint. Uh, scr- Did they both come out this year? Scream and Scream 2? I don't no know. Way. Either way, Flubber came out at number 15. 14 was Jerry Maguire. Contact at 13. Hercules, number 12. Con Air. Wait, Hercules, the animated movie, was number 12? Yeah. Yes, it was. Wow, I'm surprised it's so low on that list. Well, I think another animated movie's up here. No, no. There's a lot of, a lot. Oh, wow. That's the only animated movie. You're right. Uh, Con Air, number 11. Classic. I should make, I'm going to make you watch that one of these days. I've seen Con Air. I love Con Air. That's a um, <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. I've seen that one. And see, like, Nicolas Cage, I know people ironically like him. I genuinely like Nicolas Cage. Put no, I, like, Bonnie I, like, down. I like Nicolas Cage, too. <laughs> so good. Uh, okay, number 10. George of the Jungle. <laughs> Brandon Fraser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Batman and Robin. Wow, not, that's not a even, fall. <laughs> it really is. Not even I top was, five. I was kind of hoping it fell out of the top ten, but I guess not. No, nah, I wish it would have too. But if, if the, all these films are 100 million plus gross. Uh, Face Off, number eight, number seven. <laughs> that's another Jack Nick, uh, not a Nicolas Cage movie. Right? It's a good movie. Face and who, who do you act off of? Who was the other one? John Travolta. John Travolta, John Travolta, yeah. Just Nicholas them Cage. both that chewing was, the that scenery. Was, that, was, that was a good movie. I like that movie. <laughs> it's good. Uh, then Titanic at number seven. Uh, really? Only seven? I think it's got to be coming off from the year before here. There's no I was way. To, I was about to say, that was like number one from what I remember. It, it was the most gross film of all time for Avatar. At one point. Avatar. Yeah. yeah. Then it was my, uh, my best friend's wedding at number six. I'm not even sure what that is. Neither do I. The 1997 special edition of Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope. That makes sense. Yep. Air Force One, number four. Wow, that's a Harrison Ford movie. That's good, yeah. too. See, a good year, man. Number three, Liar, Liar. Jim Carrey movie. I guess I could see it, but that's not that yeah. great of a movie. No, it's not, but it's the 90s. Uh, number two, Lost World Jurassic Park. Really? <laughs> that's that's, that's what I was saying. Like, really? I mean, I like it, but... <laughs> And number one, number Steven Spielberg movie, Men in Black. Oh, uh, yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that movie came out, I think, the same weekend as Batman and Robin. Oh, man, probably. I think this, because uh, I remember I read that it went up against uh, that Men in Black and Hercules. That's why I was surprised Hercules was so low. Well, I'm looking at it. Okay, so Hercules came out. Remember did I say that was 12? That came out June 15th. Batman and Robin came out June 20th. And Men in Black came out July 2nd. No. Oh. What a week of movies. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember where I um read what they were up against, but I read it somewhere. Well, yeah, that's that's the top ten. All right. I guess that's all the distracting we can do. We have to actually get into this proper, huh? I, I really don't want to. I really, Gross Point Blake came out this year. That's a movie. I don't like John Cuse, like I realized, and I do not like that movie. Uh, he plays an assassin in a, a yeah. radio store, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm trying to distract myself from this movie, okay? All right. We open with the bat signal, and it, then it freezes and shatters. It becomes cold as ice. I'm just letting all the booze happen. Oh, come on. I really don't want to talk about it. It was so bad. But I was like, okay, let's do this. Well, either the movie knows it's going to be bad, or <laughs> they just know they have a lot to get through because they fly through the credits over a red skirt, a red background. Yeah, I'm like so, I was. It shocked. was like we're like, yep, we were, we don't have time for these credits. <laughs> they, they they tell you the main stars, and that's it. So it's funny. Over it was the credits are over a red sky, and if you ever read DC Comics during a crisis event, the sky is always red. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying this movie was a crisis. And yes. Uh huh. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so we get our titular suit up as we go into the back cave. As we look at George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell's butt and nipples in their new suits. <laughs> I were I were big in my notes, but that but yeah. And then we get the new new toy, the Batmobile that you can buy at Walmart right now. I was I was thinking to myself as they suit it up and as like they get like they present all the to- cool gadgets. There's a crisis going on. What's with all the showmanship right now? Who's this for? Let's take like 20 minutes for the Batmobile to get in place. 
Well, he is a billionaire. People are dying, TJ. <laughs> They're just apparently not. I don't think a single person dies in this entire movie. <sighs> I think you're right. And they all get frozen. 11 minutes, guys. What? Oh, it takes 11 I, minutes you said 11 minutes, out. and the last time I looked at our recording time, it said 11 minutes. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it takes 11 minutes to thaw someone out, apparently. Oh. No, they have 11 minutes or they're dead. They have 11 minutes to thaw them out. That's stupid. Anyway, so the chicks dig the car. And Superman works alone is what we learned from this scene. I wrote the same thing down. I wrote my first three notes. Ice logo, butts, car slash Superman. Which I found the Superman line particularly funny because he's got a dog. He's got a cousin. He's got... Does he ever work with a cousin? I know he works with a dog for a bit. Yeah, he works with... Car a lot in really? the comics. Yeah, Car was in the Superman comics for a little bit. But they were a duo. I mean, they team up from time to time. But like, not like how Batman has Robin. I guess well, not Superman and Supergirl, or whatever. Yeah, no, no, not like that. But okay, because I mean, you don't really need two super Kryptonian people to handle a bank robbery. You don't, even, you don't even need one for that. That's overkill. So, well, I mean, I'm sure there was at some point. They, I'm sure they had a little team up together and stuff for a little while when they introduced the character just to get her popular. Okay, that's fair. You know, we talk about yeah, Superman. I don't want to talk not, about Batman. But yeah, he like so he's got he's got a dog. He's got a cousin. He's got his investigative journalist wife. You know, he's got a plenty of people. Well, he gets married. Batman, uh, Superman. Yeah, he marries Lois Lane. They have kids and everything. I thought you met some other lady. Okay. He's like, he married some other journalist? No. Well, no, he never ma- married Lana Lang. Lana Lang does become a journalist at some point, though. Yeah. Yeah, he was just a big crush on her, correct? Well, I think there were... It depends on the continuity. Sometimes they were high school sweethearts, but sometimes they weren't. Okay. I don't know. This isn't Superman lore, all right? We have to talk <laughs> about Batman and Robin. No, we don't. Okay, so yeah, the car... The chick sticks the car. Superman works alone. Yeah, and so Batman gets in his toy Batmobile and drives off, but then we have to wait another five minutes for Robin's bike to rise up out of the ground so we can see the Robin cycle before he can follow suit. Like I said, people are dying, or get, people are freezing to almost death. And have all the showmanship. And right from the beginning, right uh, soon in this thing, we get first hints of Alfred dying. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, he shows him, like, being, like, out of breath in the cave as they take off. Yeah, slouching against the, uh, the bat cave wall. In pain, Master Wayne. <laughs> I'm in pain, Master... I wish I could rhyme. I wish I could rap. It'd be a great lyric to have right there. You're making fun of of, <laughs> of that right now. Yeah. But Michael Go is pretty amazing. Oh, him as Alfred. It's been great. And I, <laughs> I mean, really think they should have stuck the landing with his death and this movie. Yeah, maybe. As my, I think I, it, it would have left more impact, definitely. Yes. Because it, it was generally sad at points. When oh, yeah. He was, when he was actually dying, and then they copped out at the end. They really, because they, they foreshadowed it a lot. They were heavy, like, hey, guys, he's gonna die. It's like, yeah, nah. and, and the movie can slow down at those moments, completely change tone and everything. Oh, my God, yeah. It went from unpun pun to sad, 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 multiple yeah. times. I just want to point out, Michael Go as Alfred in this movie is one of the best things in the movie. Yeah, it's like he's like one of the few actors who like kind of puts their all into it, I think we could say. But to be fair, he's one of the only actors in this movie that got anything to do. He's the only actor that had an arc. You're right. Yeah. He's the only one that had anything <laughs> written for him. And that's not a knock against him. No. He took, he took everything he had with it and put it into it. And, and I appreciate I, it. Yeah, but everybody else kind of got, all right, your cartoon characters, this yeah. act. And you, you have to make freezy puns and care about your wife. That's your that's your notes. You're you're a female, so you're a sex symbol and plant jokes. You're, you're a Batman. You're Robin, and you're a college student slash motorcycle gang slash acrobatic sometimes slash whatever the fuck we need you to be. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's Bane, by the way, guys. <laughs> we'll get the Bane. I'm oh, sorry. Did... There's so much in this movie we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're get, we'll get to Bane in a little bit. <laughs> oh, I, want, I want the metric for you going. Um, the campiness of this movie is, is toned up a lot, and we we see like a first sign of it when he's riding his uh, Batmobile, and the screen pops up, and Commissioner Gordon is saying his Commissioner Gordon spiel. Yeah, it's really rem- it's, reminiscent of the the sixties. Yeah, it's definitely Tim, the commissioner is definitely calling Batman fr- on the red telephone while yes. they slide down their poles. <laughs> yes. That's definitely what happened. Anyway, Mr. Mu- Mr. Freeze is robbing a museum for diamonds because, you know, they're called ice because, of course, they are. Yes, the Iceman cometh. And 
I, this is, I started keeping track of the puns at this point, but after about a dozen Mr. Freeze puns, I couldn't do it anymore. I saw so I stopped. So I'm going to skip over those notes. Well, honestly, I, 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 did, I did that for you. I took just his notes down. And shockingly, this act has the most puns. Because I, I was going to give up too. Like, you know, I want to stick through it. Yeah, all right, go ahead. You want to go through the puns? I'll go through them, yeah. There's only like 18 I wrote down because, like I said, after after this entrance of his, he makes a pun once in a while. Yeah, but that's the thing. The rest of his dialogue still manages to work in freeze or cold and stuff. It's oh. just naturally put in sentences. I wrote that. I wrote some of those down. Okay, <laughs> we have the Iceman cometh. And he says later on, "My heart is cold to your pleas of mercy." And then mm. there's uh, what's, what's my name? Oh, there's one absolute in the universe. Everything freezes. Mm-hmm. I have um, that one written down too. Mind you, guys, I don't deliver this as well as Arnold does. Uh, you're not sending me to the cool to the cooler. Uh, what killer? What, oh, my favorite line I always quoted since I was a kid: "What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age." So, yeah. So that one's like the most famous one. It's the best one. <laughs> Freeze well. Uh, stay cool, big bird, big boy, bird boy. Sorry. Uh, very nice, but he emphasizes the ice part in it. That's so dumb. Uh. All right, everyone, chill, chill, chill. As he's shooting his laser ice, ice gun, and then he says later on, "Cool party. Uh, it's a cold town. Allow me to break the ice. My name's Freeze. Should I keep going? This is so many of them. You do you. I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna say the other ones later on in the podcast. Yeah, it was really, really bad. But see, hold on. I don't want to hear all that. They they are terrible. I hate puns. But the way Arnold's just going balls to the wall with it, like you know what, I gotta do what I gotta do. It's my thing. He's 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 he's, a, the, he's enjoying it. I'll give him that. Yeah. To me, he's one of the other actors. who's really I can't say doing well, but doing well for the movie. He's doing what he was told to do. <laughs> yes, and I enjoyed him the most in this movie, honestly. Anyway, he's there trying to steal diamonds, and then Batman breaks another skylight. He's easy breaks through. I don't know why he hates skylights, but. He always comes in through a skylight and breaks it. Right, the doors are open for him. Like, just, yeah, grand entrance. And then we get introduced to Mr. Freeze's villains in this movie, which are, I guess, hockey players? Just, yeah, henchmen number one, two, three, four. They they, they use hockey sticks. Uh, and, and then, for some reason, Batman and Robin have ice skate shoes. I don't know how they were aired to know that they needed an ice skate shoe. They literally got the information that they were fighting Mr. Freeze in the Batmobile. Well, the Batmobile has a secret apartment for all of his shoe needs. Oh, okay. Okay. And then, so, you know, there's a giant fight scene, and then Mr. Freeze gets the giant diamond, and then all of a sudden, the car that he broke into the museum Wait, with... hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't just say there's a giant fight scene. There's a giant fight scene. No, no, no. <laughs> this is like a five-minute ice capade bullshit we had to watch. They're <laughs> literally playing ice hockey with this diamond. <laughs> Literally, the the Batman and Robin have ice uh, the uh, hockey puck sticks. Well, look, this was the least ridiculous moment in the movie. But it sets the tone for the movie. <laughs> Literally, the, the, uh, this is the this is every time one of these characters jump, they fly. So yes. I mean, so there's so much string work in this. It's like the ho- them playing hockey with a diamond didn't even register on my thing. In fact, what I was just about to get to when Mister Freeze gets a diamond because he breaks in into this museum with like a porcupine car yeah but the car turns into a rocket ship oh i i you know oh my well f- and as he's walking through the diamond there's a spotlight following him who the f- patrolling the spotlight to follow mr free dr freeze this whole sequence is just like it made me want to see batman on ice but i, I shouldn't have to want that feeling watching this fucking movie so so they sh- mr free sh- sh- uses the rocket i guess i don't know what the rocket's for what's the rocket for uh, the freeze Batman in hell, apparently. But that's not why he was trying to get away before Batman even got in there in the rocket. Listen, man, you're asking too many questions. So Batman jumps into the rocket, Robin's on the rocket, and they all go up in the air, and the rocket's going to freeze them when they get to a certain height. And Mr. Freeze escapes with glider wings. Oh, my God, so dumb. And he looked like when he was gliding down, he looked like a villain from Power Rangers. And, but he managed to freeze Batman's wrist to the wall, which I don't know why Batman couldn't just break away the ice, but whatever. But so he's saved by Robin. And then Batman and Robin go and surf down to the jump down on like makeshift surfboards. Say, say that say that sentence again. They, they surf jump down. 
they surf. They follow Mr. Freeze by jumping out of the rocket. What makeshift <laughs> surfboards? Mind you, this rocket's so far up already. Like once they land, they're gonna die realistically. Oh uh, man. So, but before they, uh, but I forgot. Batman has to set a bat bomb inside the rocket to blow it up, so it doesn't do whatever it is it was supposed to do. But it's gonna cause the breeze to fall down to the city. And he's trying to avoid people dying. It's gonna cause people to die no matter what. Then, right? I don't know. The logic there is not sound. I was kind of done right at this point. <laughs> this- oh, oh, during the hockey scene, I had to pause it. Like, hey, I'm gonna get some alcohol real quick. <laughs> I forgot this is this is a dumb movie. I cannot say that enough. I couldn't believe how long this opening scene was. <laughs> I said that with almost every scene. Like this seems way too long for what's, what it is. This this whole movie could have been cut down to 30, 45 minutes and made into like it's just a short or a short commercial or, or episode of something. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, eventually, um, I wrote something and I can't read it, and I'm not bothering to figure out what it is. Freeze up. Uh, Freezes Robin, I guess. No, we didn't get there yet. The, um, no. Robin, uh, is it surf or snowboards across a roof? Oh my god! Yeah. At one point, it says Calabunga. Oh, uh, the CGI. They use a lot of CGI in this movie. Oh yeah. A lot of ninety CGI. And I could tell it's CGI, which means it's bad. I, I, I hope you were gonna say that, but yeah, yeah. yeah like there's I some mean, there's some points that's kind of passable, like kinda. No, you're but if you squint your eyes enough. Look, I I can't tell any of that shit apart. I'm <laughs> easily fooled by CGI. I can't see any of it, but I saw it all in this movie. It was bad. It's horrendous. I, it's horrendous. So they're fl- they're chasing Freeze down. Robin gets the diamond. Batman rips Mr. Freeze's glider wings off, and they're falling down. And Mr. Freeze slows his descent by using his freezing beam in a furnace. I don't think physics works that way, but whatever. Even if physics worked that way, how much energy does he must he have stored up for that landing to be successful? I don't know. Depends on how many diamonds he puts in his freaking suit at that point. <laughs> Did diamonds even work that way? Uh, I guess if he built a suit that powers on diamonds, I guess so. I don't know how that works. Granted, I'm not a smart man. Anyhow, so the Mr. Freeze is running from Batman and Robin, and Robin gets uh, to Gung Ho and jumps in and gets himself frozen. And Mr. Freeze says, save Robin or chase me. And of course, Batman chases Robin and Mr. Freeze runs away. And then Robin oh, gets... Oh, while they were chasing him, mm-hmm. I realized how slow they could only... The costumes were terrible. Like the co- I like Freeze's outfit a lot, the way it looks. But just watch them run after him and him running away. They were just so bumbly. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, if you really want to pick this scene apart, we can. Because he goes down and freezes a furnace. But there's, like, six doors leading to the furnace. Yep. And in each in each room, there's, like, a blizzard happening. Yes. So none of it makes any sense. So I can literally sit here for three hours and pick apart each scene with things that are wrong with this movie. Oh, and with the blizzard happening, there's a pool of, lit, there's a pool of water that hasn't frozen over. Because uh-huh. why? Like, I don't know, because that's where Batman puts Robin into the water so he can heat it up so Robin can thaw. But that water should have been frozen over like ten times over by now. But then Robin wouldn't be able to thaw because he can't use that thawing machine on Robin <laughs> outside of the water for some reason. Oh my god. Oh man, there's something else I want to say about this scene, but let's, let's get past this crap. Alright, let's jump over to Pamela Isley. <sighs> She is a botanist trying to save. Is it, she trying to save the plants? She's trying. Uh, I know, like sometime in the movie, she makes a point about like how the plant is dying. And we need to save it. Yeah, but I don't. Is that what she's doing before she goes crazy? Listen, I, her, her, she's doing research on plants. That's all I know. That's all I got from it. Yeah, I know. She's she's trying to combine venom with the plants for some reason. Make them grow faster and stronger, probably. Yeah, I don't know. But she's sharing this lab with uh, Doctor Woodrow. He's played by um, John John Glover. John Glover, who is a great actor. Yes, he, yes, he's a great actor. He actually played Lex Luthor's father in Smallville. No way, Ly- really? L- Lionel Luthor, and he was recently just the main the main villain of the most recent Fear the Walking Dead show. Yeah, he's great. He was in Scrooge, Gremlins, Payback. He's a good. He's a lot of good movies. He's a good actor. Yeah, I, I just bring him up in here because he's been in a lot of superhero stuff recently. So he was in Heroes. Oh shit! Remember that show? Yes, I do. The first season was good, but the rest were shit. <laughs> yes, he was in Numbers, Law and Order. I'm looking at his IMDb right now. He was with Sweet Union, Mid Sent. He's been a lot of shit. All right. Well, John Glover is Jason Woodrow, so who is sorry. also a scientist, and he's created a formula. 
And that he's auctioning it off to the what did he call it? The, the un- ununited. United <laughs> so bad. He, he he emphasized that shit. Yeah, <laughs> there's just un- a bunch of random people of color in suits standing around just watching him going. His- right, and so he's got all this. Essentially, he has Venom, which is uh, a toxin that Bane uses in the comics to make himself super, super strong. And so he experiments on this guy, who was apparently the last guy, and he turns this guy into Bane. Yeah, I wrote down my notes. Where is that? Bane, Bane, Bane. Oh, Bane, dot, dot, dot. A white prisoner. That's not his origin, is it? Nope. I got I got two origins I'm gonna have to go through pretty soon, but I'm trying to get through this scene. Oh, okay. So... Uh, Pamela Izzy overhears what's going on, so she sneaks into the lab, and then Woodrow's like, oh, okay, we we lost our funding, which was, you know, Wayne Enterprises, because of, he's a maniac, and he's like, he wants her to join him, and then we get the most hilarious scene in the movie, I'm sorry. Oh, it's so good. Where she's like, no, I'm gonna destroy you, and then John Clover goes, well, then I'm gonna have to, and then you're gonna have to die, and just screams and chokes her, <laughs> it is the most hilarious scene in this movie. <laughs> Just pushes her over and it's, it's, it's this might be the most <laughs> hilarious death scene i've ever seen because <laughs> he pushes her over this fuck over the uh the venom stuff and just starts knocking stuff on top of her yeah it knocks all kinds of poisons and shit on top of her so forth and so forth oh man all right first let's start with jason woodrow jason woodrow is a comic book character okay he's not so much a batman villain though no no and at least in more, more recent comics he's more of a swamp thing villain oh that's so continue he uh, he first appeared as an enemy of the atom i don't know if you know who the atom is is it the one that shrinks sizes or the other dude no uh, the atom is uh what's nuclear he's made of like nuclear energy he's like a superman level character okay but he's made of like energy and stuff like that he's like nuclear powered but so he first showed up there. Um, he's also known as the Floronic Man. This is he, I think he showed up in the Atom as like a regular human, but the Floronic Man is more of a Swamp Thing type creature. Okay. And he first appeared in the Flash. Uh, uh, no, first appeared in a Green Lantern story, which was a backup in a Flash story. And Wait, then, say, say that again. Uh, he first appeared in a Flash comic book, but the, it wasn't the Flash story. In the Flash comic book, there was a backup story of Green Lantern. That's confusing. Because some sometimes DC publishes backup stories, like they don't have their own books; they're just in the same book as the main star. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and he, he becomes he's like anti in that one, and then he becomes. Like he a more seated plant version of him, and like Swamp Thing number twenty one. He also became a superhero at one point called Floro. Floro. Yeah, and he joined the New Guardians. He also is was the tease for the second season villain of. Um, the Swamp Thing TV show that recently came out, but then it got canceled, so it never went through. He was also, Jason Woodrow, the scientist, was also in that. Does he have any, like, connection to Batman at all? Yes, I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Because now we're gonna jump in the Poison Ivy's background. Okay. Alright, so, do you know what Crisis on Infinite Earths is? I feel like you ask me that every week we do a Batman one, yes. Alright, so this that's the retcon point. Yes. So before the retcon point, Poison Ivy was known as Dr. Lillian Rose. Okay. And her and another guy named Mark Legrand stole an Egyptian artifact Containing ancient herbs, and he ended up poisoning her with those herbs, which turned her into poison ivy. Okay, follow me, follow me so far, right? <laughs> yes, yes. After Crisis of Infinite Earth, they changed the name to Pamela Icy, Iz- which is this version. So, when, when did this happen? This uh, crisis, crisis happened in 1984, I believe. Oh, wow, I don't know why I thought it was more recent, but okay, continue. Um, 1985. Crisis on Infinite Heart. So, in the... After the retcon, her origins was she went to school with university with Al Collin, who is Swamp Thing. And they, <laughs> and they studied under Jason Woodrow, which oh. is this version. 
moronic man. Okay, okay. And she kind of kind of got a little bit obsessed with him, and then essentially what ends up happening, she, uh, <laughs> she was seduced by him, and then he injects her with poisons and toxins as an experiment, causing her transformation. Oh. She en- yeah. She uh, nearly died twice as a result of the poisonings, which drove her insane, leading her to, um, she was in a hospital for six months, and which turned her into poison ivy. Which started her on her road towards Batman villainy. So, so I mean, it's not terrible. These two, these are the least harmed as far as origin stories go, but they're still not great. No, I mean, for a Joel Schumacher Batman movie, they're not. That's not bad. No, they did okay. Yeah, it's not offensive yet. I mean, they completely destroy the character as it goes on, but we'll get to that. Oh yeah. I, uh... Now the character they screw it up the most, Bane. Sad. Because. Bane, whose father was known as King Snake, he's yeah. a deedless superhero, usually fights against Robin, Tim Drake's Robin, joined Cobra, a secret organization and stuff. Does King Snake have his like, own cult kind of thing going on? Well, he joined Cobra, which is... Oh, okay. Gotcha. Which is a thing. I, he, I think he eventually took over, but I'm not really 100% sure. It's not, he's not a big player in anything. Anyway, he had been a revolutionary who escaped the Santa Prisca court system. Santa Prisca is where their Bane's from and so forth and so forth. So the corrupt government decided that his son would serve out a sentence. So they threw his, what, five-year-old son into prison, I think it was five? I couldn't tell you. And that's where he grew up. And he, um, let's, let's see if this, is, if this translates to this movie. He read many books in prison. He, he learned how to speak English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Latin. So multilingual, yes. He received a classical education. Oh, so he's really intelligent. Okay. He spent most of his time bodybuilding in the prison's gym. Wow. This is before he was experimented on on when he took finally took over the prison when he became grew up as like the head inmate there where the, the government decided to experiment on him with Venom and turn him essentially into what he's known as Bane today. Does that sound like this Bane at all? I think that's exactly the Bane we got in this movie. <laughs> yeah. A, an intelligent, devious, uh, strong villain who breaks Batman's back in the comics and puts him out of commission for months, forcing Batman to get a replacement. Now, when you say intelligent, I, you must mean as someone who's very loose and quiet to himself and repeats the last word you usually say. Uh, yeah, he can only say one word. Oh, and also, he's not white. He's a luchador. He's f- Hispanic, right? So, yeah, he's from San- Santa Prisca. Is a Spanish. Yeah. I think it's, it's Spanish country. No, in this movie, he's a scrawny, scrawny hunk white guy prisoner. That's like the only thing he kept over from the book or the, from his origin was prisoner. <sighs> Okay. Yeah, so this guy would never break Batman's back in this form. No, this this is nothing but a glorified lackey. <sighs> Very glorified lackey. All right. And thinking about it, even in the, the Nolan one, he's not that no, not that great. No, we're not on that one though. So we we bef- before we go into more backstory, let's go back to the movie. We cut over to the Batcave where Batman and Robin are, you know, looking into Mr. Freeze's history. Wait, hold on. Did we talk about Bane being created? Yeah, he was created by Dr. Woodrow being auctioned off. I think we did yeah. all that, right? Okay. Yeah, I think we did. Right. So over. So now we're learning Mr. Freeze's backstory. Okay. <laughs> so, pre-crisis, he was not called Mr. Freeze for a little bit. He was called Mr. Zero. Yes. I think, and it's, and from what I understand, it was... The 60s television series actually changed his name to Freeze, and they stuck with it. Really? Yes. I like that. I prefer Freeze. In the comics, the Joker actually killed Mr. Freeze. Really? Yes. Why? Because uh, he was just a joke villain for a long time. And I, at one point, Mr. Freeze tried to take over the Joker's gang, and so the Joker killed him. Oh, that's intense. Uh, but then the animated TV show came along and revamped his entire origin... Because originally his origin was that he was just some guy who created a freeze gun and it backfired and spilled cryogenical chemicals on himself. <laughs> that was his origin. Okay. Which is a pretty lame, weak origin. Right. How did they revamp but it? The origin in this one is what we pretty much got in this show, where he's 
trying to cure his wife cryogenically, and then he pretty much falls into that vat of chemicals. Always However, get a railing on your uh, balconies, people. However, if you've never seen the Heart of Ice episode of Batman the Animated Series, you should go watch it, because it's one of the most tragic character studies you'll ever watch, and it's worth a watch, and this movie completely takes that and it spits in its face because they make it as such a secondhand thing like it doesn't even matter like it see it's, i was watching the movie i focused more on frieza's story and his react I, I liked it i like i know it's not going to be the show i get that but from for for them stretching it out throughout the movie it wasn't be- not believable but i was like i felt bad for the dude well that's because that's a testament to how strong that this origin was yes but they stole it from the animated series yeah, and completely trivialized it by having it in this jokey movie. Yeah, but, like, the story's still there and it's still touching. It's Even there. Arnold plays a character, like, up, like, yeah, when he's being jokey, he's jokey. But when he's really, really focused on his wife, you can see he's, he's broken over it. Yeah, but it's nowhere near as tragic as it should be because it's being covered by all this other crap and then thrown well, how tragic should, well you don't want a movie to be all sad 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 granted it, it no, shouldn't be this 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 no, abomination no it's not about being sad it was a cartoon yeah and they animated see in an animated series and they did it really well it should if it should if they were gonna do this origin with mr freeze they should have taken it more seriously taken it more seriously mm. Yes, I I do one hundred percent agree with that. But for what for this being in the hands of Joel Schumacher, I think Freeze's storyline and Alfred's being those two, those two being the sad things. I think if they were going to do Mister Freeze with a Joel Schumacher, they should have stuck with the guy with the cryogenic gun. No, God, no. This movie, I, no. It would have fit way no. better. It would have. Fit, ugh, God, I hate that you're right about that. But I couldn't have sat through this movie if it was that. At least this freeze had something. He's the villain that had a good story behind him in this movie. I was thinking to myself, if they would have put this freeze and this Arnold with Carrie and uh, Two Face, uh, Tommy Lee Jones in the other movie, he would have fit well in that one because they were he was chewing the scenery up. This way, he felt kind of out of place. Well, and that's he also felt out of place with his own origin because he's so jokey. You know, I'll he's give you so, that. And he's so punny that it doesn't fit the sadder side of him. Yeah, saying that because sh- yeah, because he's, he's from one scene he's like freeze this, freeze that, suck my freezy balls to like oh my wife, I need you, I miss you. This is all for right. you. You're- he, <laughs> he goes from tragic to comedy in like thirty seconds, and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because literally there's a scene we'll get to where he's like his henchman, he was just like conducting him to sing, and he walks to his dead wife, his sister, pouting just. I miss you, whatever your name is, like man. And it doesn't make any sense. His characterization is so broken because they got too many conflicting things going on with his character. Well, maybe, maybe he's a uh, bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of that one. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you know, you, Al- that was a good joke. Alfred was sick. <laughs> Alfred was sick. He. Uh, I got a question. Is that movie? Is that storyline made for this movie, or was it ever a thing in the comics or show? No, nah, this was made for this. I mean, there's plenty of times where Alfred, like Alfred's dead in comics right now. Yeah, you've said that thing last time. You have the on or off, but I remember you talking about this. So, like, I don't think there's been a, like a storyline where he's sick. And he died. I, he died twice in the comics. Wow, really. Yeah, the cool. first time he died by a giant rock in, like, the early 60s. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I think they just wanted to write him out, so they, I think they killed him off there. And then more recently, he was killed by Bane, which I've said before. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't think there's ever been a storyline where he was sick. And, I mean, it's, this whole storyline with him is all contrived just so they could tie everything together. Yeah. But I don't think so. Anyway, they're going through Mrs. Freeze's backstory, and then Alfred disappears. He's, you know, because he's sick. And then Bruce has the first of his little Alfred memories in flashback. Yeah, there's like a lot of flashbacks, slash. It's a flash. 
It's not. It's a flashback without actually going into the past. No, because he'll set this. He'll stare at the hallway. There's a word for this. He'll stare at the hallway, and then he'll see himself with Alfred as a young kid. Yeah, and that happens like three times throughout the thing. Yeah, three or two times too many. It's not the worst thing in the movie. No, but it does slow the movie down. We go from that sad scene to Poison Ivy coming up from her. <laughs> from you sound from the, so sad about it. <laughs> Well, it's because she rises up from the debris in this sexy dance. With this. Like this, like she's this, like she's just this dancer or whatever. And then John Glover is all like mesmerized and it's like all of a sudden he's in love with her and then he kisses her and then she kills him with a poison kiss. Oh man. And that's her, that's her thing about the whole movie. She just kisses people to death. Is that her thing yeah. in the books? Like does she, I know she has more, like I know she can control plants. What else does she have in the comics? Well, she, I think she has poison kiss. She's also immune to all poisons. Which is pretty badass. Uh, she has control over plant life. Um, there's, like, multiple versions of, like, clones of herself and stuff like that because she's a plant. One time she got killed in a, the terrible uh, Heroes in Crisis storyline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was killed in that, but what was it? Wally West was Wally West the Flash. They, yeah, he's oh. the one that they, they destroyed in that. They destroyed his character in that one. They've been trying to ruck kind of ever since. Anyway, he ends up going the past and finding a seed of her, and they regrow her. Stop it! Yeah, stop everything. That's the stupidest thing. That's the dumbest thing. They find it. <laughs> what? Well, they, well, not they don't find the seed. They get a seed somehow, and she grows back. What? Because she's a plant, you know? That's ridiculous. She's also connected to the green, which is what the Swamp Thing's co- connected to. Because That, I, ex- I accept that. Okay. Is, is something part of the DC? Or is it Marvel? DC, right? It's DC. Okay. Were they ever, like, a Thing thing? Would they ever, like, get it on? No. Having, like, Swamp Thing, I, sw- Ivy Swamp children? No, no, no. No, and I, and I think I did mention this in the Swamp Thing review... He did possess John Constantine's body so he yes. can sleep with his girlfriend. So there's some weird things that goes on with Swamp Thing. Some awesome things that go on with Swamp Thing. Okay. Anyway, after Ivy kills Woodrow, she just she hears Bane yelling. She's like, I'm coming, Bane, and he just accepts her. Just works with her for her for some reason. I don't know why. Because she killed her ma- his master, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. It's stupid. She destroys the uh, hideout, and we cut to Mr. Freeze doing his dumb sing-along thing. What, the snow miser? That's so... Have you never seen Rudolph? He's Mr. Snow Miser. I get it. Okay, I, okay, snow shit, whatever. Why the f*** is he conducting, orchestrating his henchmen to sing along to this while they're all freezing to death? Because they need to... They need to segue into his uh alan wife <laughs> like i said earlier from this jokey ass dumb se- sequence to the most i mean what else do you expect from a guy whose hideouts in an ice cream factory i'll give you this his robe i like it looks really comfortable anyway it looks so i was looking all for like, i was watching the movie i was on amazon and all these were like where can i find this robe at anyway mr freeze his wife Apparently has a disease that has four stages, and Mr. Freeze has managed to cure one stage so far. We need to remember that for later. <laughs> anyway, we cut over to Alfred's niece knocking on Wayne Manor. I don't like, I think I said last review of Batman Forever, I don't like Robin in these movies. I, I, just, I just don't like that he's, I don't mind that he's annoying and like childlike, that's what, that's what Robin is, I guess, sometimes. I just hate that he's aged up to this point and still acting that way. I mean, everyone's a cartoon in this one. It's, he stands out less in this one than he does in Batman Forever. See, to me, he stands out more in this one than Batman Forever. No, this... he was fit perfectly in this movie. Okay, he fits in the movie, but he, he's still one of the annoying parts of the movie. Does that make sense? No, because I found the entire movie annoying, and I found him pr- a, a pretty average in comparison. Yes, but still annoying. Eh, He's got puns just like everyone else. He's no more annoying than Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze is likable, though. 
Oh, well, gonna... I'll give you that. I will give you that. Robin cries an awful lot in this. Oh, that's his thing. Like the whole again, the love thing and the whole. Yeah. Gosh, that's, that's just dumb. It's lazy. The Batman and Robin arguing thing, but you know, Batman's just of an just as annoying with his, like you know, you're gonna get hurt. Sh- it's like why that's the I guess this this is, they're all one note and they're all repetitive. This could have been thirty minutes and have been fine. I think that if, if, if this was thirty minutes, this probably would have been like one of the most mediocre movies ever. <sighs> Barbara shows up at Wayne Manor, Alfred's niece, because I guess they didn't want to have Barbara Gordon in this one. No, that that story arc coming out after before this. What Batgirl? No, no, Barbara Gordon's uh the, the Am I thinking of the wrong uh, I'm thinking of death or uh, one bad day, I think, right? What? When Joker says it takes one bad day to have someone turn into a... Oh, no, that's the killing joke. That is... That was before this. Okay. Yeah, no, that was way before this. I think that was like 88, 89. No way, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. This movie takes no inspiration from that book. But, yeah, I don't know why she isn't Commissioner Gordon's um, daughter. I don't know why she doesn't have red hair like she does in the thing, but... Alicia Silverstone's not a bad actress, so... She's, she's um, not. She's not. I don't know why, if she's Alfred Sneak, she's speaking with an American accent when she's from London. I don't know why. There's a lot of I don't know why's for this, TJ. <laughs> I don't know why she's a, uh, she's an Ivy League student who... Well, they just introduced them, and she's going to stay with them for a while. Yeah. And then we get shown a little later that she's talking to Alfred, and they're bonding over, you know, family and stuff like that. And then she sneaks out and steals one of the bikes. Yeah, I, yeah. That's that. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> and it, that was, <laughs> that was essentially, her scenes were pretty average, honestly. There was, I can't really say nothing bad about it, because it's just, there were. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're there. <laughs> they're there. They happened. Because <laughs> uh, like you said, they're not bad. They're not like like yeah, this is cool. Like that is just yeah, she comes like, in, hugs, they go to sleep. She sneaks out. Yep. Her and Alfred bond a little bit. It's okay. Yeah. It's like a. <laughs> <laughs> I, <Anyway>. think, <laughs> I think why I don't like her scenes because not the fact that they slow it down, just because like I wasn't expecting these decent scenes in this movie. So from going from a five minute ice capades to shitty ice puns to. What? That's the thing. We are like 40 minutes into the movie not, at this no, point. No, we're 30 minutes into the movie at this point. Oh, whatever. We're still a half hour into the movie, and we're just now getting, ex- a, like... A movie sequence. Intro- introduced, to, introduced to her. It's like, we've had six other introductions by this point, and every other one's been a cartoon character. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, the cartoonish cartoon characters, they come to this real person. Like, hey, uh-huh. I'm part of the family now, guys. Like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. And, it's so, like, out of left field. Like, what's going on? I don't know. But then all of a sudden we cut off to Bane in a suit driving Poison Ivy through the street. See, like, how do you sandwich this shit? I can only imagine being the editor. Like, how does this, how do I make this work? Like, how do I make this believable? I'm sorry. I don't know. Anyway, we cut over to the observatory where Bruce Wayne's donate in a telescope to Gotham Observatory, I guess. Wait, hold on. I'm watching this sequence. This is ridiculous. Bane's so far in Ivy, right? Yeah. He's got a f- top hat on, a tie hat. Uh-huh. She's putting a, yep. white, a blonde wig. I just realized Bane's hat. That's what caught me on. <laughs> well, when she puts on that blonde wing, it's really the only time that I saw her as Uma Thurman. Yeah. She, she she did pretty well on this. Yeah, I didn't see her as Uma Thurman other than that one moment when she put on that wig. Yeah. Anyway... At the observatory, Bruce Wayne is there with Julie Madsen, his new love interest in this movie, kind of. She has, like, two lines, and that's all you get to know about her. Well, it's funny, because she's actually prudent, because she is actually Bruce Wayne's first girlfriend in the comics. Are you kidding me? Nope. Is she a big part in his life? She was actually engaged to Bruce Wayne. You be quiet. The first... She's the first love interest of Bruce Wayne in the comics. When we get this, we get Miss Two Line. That's it. She was uh, socially, I think, engaged to him, and then she's got. She became an actress, and Clayface tried to kill her twice, I think, and then she ended up breaking it up, breaking it off with Bruce eventually. I would love to see Clayface in a movie. So yeah, it's she's part of comics history. I guess that's why they chose her. They did nothing with her. I mean, she was kind of just there. Well, 
I guess she was kidnapped by that vampire that one time. <laughs> See, she did things, kind of. She was a damn damsel, but she did things. <laughs> she got kidnapped by a vampire, and they were going to turn her into a werewolf. Early Batman comics. Oh, uh, okay. Like, did you review it in your other podcast? Yes, I did. Okay. It's called Batman, I think it was Batman versus the Monk or something like that. And we, it was, no, it was called Batman versus the Vampire. It was called Batman versus the Vampire Part 1, the first one. And there was no vampires in it, so we were so confused why the vampires. And then the second issue hit, and I was like, oh, there's all the vampires. That's great. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, so I guess she was hypnotized by a vampire once. Anyway, at the observatory, Pamela Isley shows up and offers Bruce Wayne a proposition to pretty much kill all humanity in order to save the Earth. And, she, and, and Bruce is... And she says this in front of a lot of people, too. Yep. And Bruce is, like, really polite about it. He says, no, thank people first. You say polite or impolite? Polite. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, he's it's Bruce Wayne. He's usually a nice guy, right? Eh, he can be a playboy asshole at points. Okay, I, I was gonna think about I was thinking about this as well. I was watching the movie. I think it's hard to do a good Bruce Wayne because he's supposed to be like an ominous, quiet character, correct? At least Bruce in my Wayne? mind, not Bruce Wayne, but like Batman. Batman slash is. a Bruce Wayne behind, not not in public eye. Yeah, he's kind of reserved. Yeah, he, in, the, in the public eye, he's like, okay, I'm Bruce Wayne, haha. But well, as soon as he closes the doors, he's like somber, serious. Well, I have to do research. Perfect, the perfect example of that kind of Bruce Wayne's in a movie you didn't like. It was a boring movie. Mask of the Phantasm. They, they did all of that in that one. Maybe the I playboy si- the Playboy side of him when he got that drink through in his face. Yeah. The somber side of it when he gets away from the party and sits down and thinks about it when he's by himself. Well, that's the thing. And I, then the- I think that's like an animation. It's easier to do. I think they haven't really narrowed like gotten that Bruce Wayne yet in live action. I don't think they probably can. Yeah, I think they can if they got, just got someone who cared about Batman. Well. Tim Burton was too focused on Tim Burton. Yeah, Joel Schumacher was too focused on... On George, <laughs> on creating a toy commercial. They all brought their own definite style. Christopher Nolan is art over Batman. Their what? Christopher Nolan was like, I'm going to do my own version of Batman, the artsy Batman. Yeah. And then, you know... The Snyder ones. The Snyder... Jim, yeah, and then we don't need to discuss the Snyder one. No, but yeah, I, I was just thinking to myself, there's just no, I just haven't seen. It's because they haven't got someone who really loves Batman to let them just do Batman. Do you think it'd be compelling to watch a live action? Because I think Batman, when he's being Batman, he should be ominous and just menacing. I haven't gotten that yet. I'm just, like, animation? All the time. It's great. They've also never, like, done any of the proper good storylines from the comics into any of this. You're right. You're right. Which is awkward. It's, it's weird because there's just so they're, they're literally all there. They just everyone every time someone gets their hand on Batman, we're gonna do my own vision of Batman. Just do the f-ing stories that work. <laughs> you're right. You're right because they've all been. I'm gonna do the the Tim Burton Tim Burton esque one. I'm gonna do the flamboyantly colorful ones, or I'm gonna do like you said the gritty realistic. <laughs> Heisting they ones. The f- they have the same problem with Superman, too. They just yes. don't let Superman be Superman. Just f- He doesn't need to be dark. He's <laughs> Superman. <laughs> just let him be who he is. <laughs> we need Superman in the world. He's he's a symbol. He's hope. He's supposed to be the best of us. Yeah, they keep trying to reinvent the will and no one's asking them to do so. Just make but the f- keep- thing. They keep trying to reinvent the wheel, but they have not done the original exactly. one yet. Because yeah. <laughs> there's, I guess, because there's so much material out there, they think in their minds it's already been done. So let me do it my way. I, I want to see it done proper first on the big screen, and then do it your way. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, I, ridiculous. <laughs> this just. Do what made it popular in the first place, and you won't have any issues. This is such a fanboy thing. That's such a so, <laughs> just do it, made it, do it, do it right. <laughs> <laughs> do it my way, the vision way, do it proper. But like, I, I, but, I agree. I agree, though. But yeah. But take a little, one look at the Marvel movies. Yeah. And that's a perfect example. Yep. Just do it right. Yeah. Put some Stop care putting into it. your. Don't don't put your <laughs> spin on it. Do it right. Yeah. And then add to it. Yeah. Yeah. You can follow. add your you can add your style to already the core that's there. But just follow the core. Follow the basics. And add a little at a time to it. 
These are already popular characters. These are characters that are, like, in a thousand years might be myths and legends. Honestly, yeah. I mean, they're, they're so popular, so successful. They survive a lot of bad... They survive the Schumacher era. So, like, if you did pick your own take on it, for better or for worse, they're going to surpass that. So just do the right thing. Do the do what it was yeah. supposed to be. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's just annoying. Yeah. I just, I've, I've just been dying to see a good Batman. As much as I do like the Nolan ones when we get to them, it's not a Batman that I, I, like the I first, want. What? I like the first one. I know. I know. Like, to the way we had Christopher Reeves as the great Superman slash Clark Kent, we haven't had that, in my opinion, for Batman yet. Christopher Reeves slash Clark Kent. Okay, that didn't sound right, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Superman slash Clark Kent. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Christopher Reeves. Like, he, he was that. We haven't had that for Batman yet, in my opinion. Hmm. Eh, it just it all it all depends. I guess. Like a lot of people think um Kevin Conroy is the different Batman. But right? again, that's that's animation though. You're talking live action. Yes. You're, talk about live you're action. talking live action and a lot animation people, they always Michael, nail it. A lot of people say that's Michael Keaton, so I I, just, I didn't see it. It was just Keaton doing Keaton. I never saw once like, oh man, he's a good Bruce Wayne or well, he's a good Batman. It's like, oh it's just Michael Keaton. Dude, I still got like a half a page of notes to get through. We did go on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was Batman. We talked about that. It's the last one of the series, so we got to talk about Batman more. So, <laughs> we go from Isley's uh, proposition to home movies with Mr. Freeze. Again, he, I, like these little moments of Mr. Freeze and his seriousness, they came across to me. Yeah, but then the henchman comes out and he freezes him. Yeah, and then he gets and I up get that. And looks. And looks at the newspaper and says, oh, oh, comically. Yeah, like, I see that you're right. Like, there's two Mr. Freeze in this movie. But I think if there was too much of the somber Mr. Freeze, have been like, I don't know. Okay. Because, Batman because right, and Robin. Though. That's the thing. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Batman and Robin decide they're going to trap Mr. Freeze by donating the Wayne Diamonds to the telescope? Or no? They're, it's going to be at to the Botanical Gardens or something, right? Yes, yes. Anyway, it's a trap just they bring out. Um, Mr. Freeze. I didn't know the Waynes just had diamonds lying around, so... Because he called them the Wayne diamonds, right? Right. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, we cut over to this Scala or whatever it is, and there's all kinds of, like, questionable dancing going on. Define for, questionable. Like, you got, like, tribal people dancing in, like, rainforest stuff. Yeah, it's very, uh, dated. It's very... I get it. It's theme, and there's, like, Tarzan guys, like white guys without shirts rolling around there and stuff like that. I don't know. It's a weird scene. So, I, it's also an auction, which I always th- thought was weird. Why? Like, selling people kind of thing. Also, that's a like charity kind of thing, so like... Yeah, I know, but yeah. you're selling someone's time a little bit. <laughs> well, they're not doing You know like, what I mean? It's not like a dentured server, too. It's like, hey, spend the night with me, no, go for a date, go to a movie or something. It's still weird. I never found a problem was, with that. I did because you know, if you take any look at any kind of history, <laughs> and it's just like it's like uh, that's kind of what they did. I kind of that is well, what they did. Yeah, I, that is what they did. So it's <laughs> I always found it weird when they do that. Like if they find that acceptable for some reason. Yeah, but whatever. It's a dated nineties movie. Well, I guess when I see it, usually is like, oh, spend a night with this. Who, what man can buy it? Yeah, it's still sexist when I say it. I, in my mind, it sounded better. But it's like, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> who wants this lovely lady for the night? Like, oh, oh okay. It's, but they yeah. usually say, okay, who, what lovely lady wants to come home with this bachelor? They try to spin it. That's still rapey. You're right. You're right. It's bad. <laughs> but at the same time, this is even dumber because they're auctioning off women to dance with with diamonds on. <laughs> Uh, yes. And the same three people in the crowd is the only one that ever bet anything. Yes. Which is really stupid. So, this giant gorilla gets up on the stage and starts dancing. And it's Poison Ivy. And everybody's infatuated as she blows her pheromones all over everybody. Seductive gorilla to Poison Ivy. (sighs) And so, now everyone's betting on Poison Ivy because they just... Except this woman to come out of the crowd and get on stage and interfere in this whole thing. But whatever. But everyone starts betting and the Batman and Robin get into it and then the infamous bat credit card comes out. Which is, it leads up to it is like, okay, Batman bets what, two million, Robin three. 
Batman that says gets, you can't afford it. it like, up, I'll borrow it from you. Yeah, it gets up to seven million. Yeah, and Batman pulls out his Bat credit card. So Batman he never leaves. Batman like is like Robin says, I'll borrow from you. Batman's like, okay, yeah, I guess you're right then, and they keep going at it. Like I, that would just stop the conversation at my point. No, the worst part is the back credit card. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I know. We're getting a deficit, like like the the, the go to a credit card company and say, "I want a back credit card." Yeah, did he it, give his name? It, did he give his name and information <laughs> to get that credit card? Or did the, the credit card company just accept that he's Batman and say, "Okay, Batman, here, here's a seven million dollar limit. We don't need to see your credentials or anything or how much money or your what your bank account is." And I th- <laughs> And let's say they did know all this. Do they have the, like the, the? Shouldn't they have like the wherewithal to report him to the authorities to pay for the damages of the city and people's deaths and, and hospital right. bills? And if they, and they, they, you know what? <laughs> exactly. If he has, the, if they have his account back credit card, and anytime he does this, does damage the city, like you said, why don't they just put it on the back credit card? Right, charge his ass. Like, okay, yeah, you're banking. Exactly. You're banking with Bank of America. You're banking with whoever the f- you're banking with. Where's this guy live at? Oh, he dresses to the back cave. Where the f is the back cave at? Like, there's just such so, so, that's a logistical nightmare. That it's the dumbest thing they could have, that's probably the dumbest thing in this movie. <sighs> anyway, let's move on because I'm I've people have complained about the back credit card for a long time. Yeah. So we don't need to get into that. No, we don't. So Freeze crashes this auction. <sighs> and it's funny because this, this movie's really similar to the other one, but way worse. Like, this is like so tiring to watch. This is where I noticed the sound effects are really stupid. Yeah, you got that too, huh? Yep. <laughs> sound effects, really cartoony sound effects in this scene especially. <sighs> and then Freeze and Ivy are on screen for the first time together. And it's it's neat to see them on screen. And that's the problem with this movie. Yep. There's a lot of people on screen together that I want to see on screen together yeah. in an actual movie. Like, I want to see Batman, Robin, and Batgirl on live screen fighting Side by side. I just don't want to see it in this movie. Exactly. To see all three of these villains and three of those heroes, like, oh, great. Especially at one time in the last sequence. Like, this is pretty cool. But then you think about, like, oh, yeah, it's a Schumacher. This isn't a good one. This is a lot. <sighs> anyway. Uh, and did you have the problem with this movie of it being, like, it's it's colorful, but still, like, ugly and dark? Yeah. Like, yeah. Again, two tones fighting it out. Like, yeah, we're colorful, but we're still kind of, you know whatever different yeah. anyway uh ivy's pheromones don't work on mr freeze because i guess he's got cold heart he said or something <laughs> yeah. stupid like that and no one else i noticed in the scene the way diamonds are red it's not a ruby yes yes <laughs> yes it is but it's surrounded by smaller diamonds i think so that's what, oh okay yeah. so it's that's my okay, excuse so he, he wanted the smaller diamonds but I, I, I'm pretty sure our, our red gems are ruby, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know gems. Maybe I'm not a good geologist. <laughs> it's the Wayne Ruby Diamond, I guess. And then the moment of the lowest moment in this scene is just seeing Bane in a gorilla suit. Yeah, that's what that's, you know, I was looking at. Like, man, why is he there? Why why, why they uh, have Bane in this to wear, to wear a f***ing hat, to wear a dumb suit? It was not. It was not gonna be Bane. This is stupid. This movie is. Let's, let's get a big bulky <laughs> guy with a Luchador mask on of Venom to not even fight ever. Let's keep putting hats on him, guys. That's funny, right? Let's put him like a real. And when he does, this movie is stupid. And what when he does fight, he does. He's he doesn't really move. He can't. No. It looks like he can't move his shoulders. God. And I don't even think he's in an outfit. Is he? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, isn't a, that just? I, isn't that just some wrestler? I think so. Yeah. So they're like he should be able to be. Oh my god! He this should movie be able to sucks. move like a normal person because he's just got pain on himself. God, I hate this movie so much. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't use Bane at all. Like what the? F- <laughs> oh god, this movie sucks. <laughs> Just for the record, just for the record, people, Marcus has been looking forward to this movie for months, and months and months, saying this is going to be his favorite movie. I really was when we, when we first mentioned this podcast. I was so that's like the first movie that popped in my head. Like, oh, I get to finally watch Batman and Robin again. <laughs> Nostalgia is like a hell of a thing to happen to your brain. That's a hell of a drug, oh. that's for sure. <sighs> Hey, what an hour yeah. into this, TJ? This movie's <laughs> terrible. We keep getting sidetracked. <sighs> okay. 
Anyway, for some reason, now we're in a car chase, and Mr. Freeze... What is that giant statue in the middle of Gotham? I, 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 oh, I don't know. I've always liked it, but I don't know. It's just a giant statue of a person in the middle of Gotham. I think it's like their version of Thinker, I think. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's stupid, and it's just there so Mr. Freeze can blow a hole in it and drive through it. It's unnecessary. And then Batman and Robin are chasing, and Batman voice activate turns off Robin's motorcycle. Because he thinks just Robin so we, won't make the jump. It's just so we can have more drama later in the back cave. <sighs> Ugh, excuse me. And then, as the, as as then we're jump as Batman's jumping over, Mister Freeze freezes the Batmobile. But yet, yeah, two scenes later, it's fine back in the Batcave. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you notice that? <laughs> because it <laughs> gets frozen. Did he get a toad bath? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it gets frozen. <laughs> And it gets it falls apart when it lands. It gets destroyed. And when it's back in the back cave, it is one hundred percent fixed and fine. Oh my god, that's that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. hold on, hold on. So he's, is there a mechanic on 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 call or something? Oh, it's funny you mentioned that. They did. <sighs> I needed that. At one at one point in the comics, the Bruce hires this hunchback to be his mechanic. Wow. Because he was working for a criminal organization. I think it was the Penguin he might have been working for. And he pretty much saves him from the Penguin. And as return, he works on And he only shows up in like five comics or something like that. Oh, okay. But there's a twist in the hush storyline where he was given hush um information because i forget why and that was that was one of the big twists in it but no one remember who the hell that mechanic guy was yeah oh no he got him reconstruction surgery so he wasn't like hunchback and stuff anymore oh and God. bruce is asking i'm like why would you do that i've been helping you he, and he worked in a breath gate but it's like he showed up five times and it's supposed to be this big twist and unless you're a dedicated batman fan you wouldn't have even known who the hell that guy is. That's pretty cool, though, honestly. Like, I like, that's a really deep cut, and I like that a lot. Like, for that one guy who read every comic, oh, no way! Like, that's so cool to me. But, yeah. So, I mean, th- to answer your question, yes, they do have a mechanic. <laughs> I and needed that, you think? <laughs> there was also a more famous mechanic that you probably know. Who? Lucius Fox. Is he a mechanic? Builds everything. And then, the, the, hold on. If he builds it, he knows how to fix it. And the new ones, or the, I guess not, not new anymore. And the and the old Nolan ones, is he a mechanic? Because he knows all of the stuff. But was he a mechanic on that he, shit? He's the head of R and D, so he knows how to build the stuff. He's the only one that knows about Bruce's Bruce's secret and stuff. So he's the one building everything. He's got to be. Oh, holy shit! I don't know how I feel about that. So yeah, I would assume. Okay. Anyway, the car chase leads to Freeze being captured. And then there's an argument in the bath cave, and Bruce has more childhood memories of Alfred as Alfred continues to deteriorate. I'm sorry, the way they captured uh, Freeze is uh, okay. with the dumbest, goofiest thing, because, like, Freeze thinks Batman crashed with the, the car, the Batmobile, and he's dead. But no, oh no, Mr. Freeze does the, oh no, voice, and you see Batman coming flying through the window, like, as he knocks him out, because you don't see it, you just see Batman whip his cape up and down, standing over Freeze, and that's, that's, that's that was the Freeze-Batman fight. Yeah, it was kind of lame. Very lame. I was like, what, that's, that's it? That's Freeze's story right there? But yeah, then we yeah. get to that that cave. And then we have a little moment where um learns that Barbara had taken his bike and she like flips him over and shows that she's more capable than she appears. And then we cut over to Arkham where they're <laughs> delivering Mr. Freach in a refrigerator. <sighs> And he has to, they say that his cell has a cold beam. Wait, did you skip over Alfred? I might have. What's wrong with Alfred? Uh, he's dying. Just, just heads up, he's still oh, no, dying. We, I said he's still deteriorating. We didn't get to the point oh, okay. where we learned that he's dying yet. That's still a little further ahead. Gotcha, I was paying attention. Okay, then this Batgirl. Okay, I get, I'm sorry, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, we're not We're not quite there yet. We're getting, we're slowly progressing through this. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, Mr. Freeze has a cold beam. 
that he needs to stay in. Then we cut over to Ivy, who is uh, getting a new lair. She takes over this gang of, what is that, the fluorescent pink gang? Yeah, it's, it's, their, it's their follow-up from the first mo- uh, last movie. They, they have glow-in-the-dark chains, and Bane just kind of chucks them around, and they run away. Hold on. Even this one, this is, this is dumb. So you're saying this gang leaves wherever they live at, and they come hang out here. And so when they're hanging out, they put this makeup on to hang out in blacklight and just drink and talk you don't know how gangs work that's stupid and let's say they do live here so they just wake up every night every morning put the makeup on and then shower it off at night like, like how does this work is it always the same pattern on their faces they change it yes that's that's r- ridiculous and they're not even menace, they're just hanging out. So, like, why have the makeup on in the first place? Because they're getting ready to go do Havoc. They're just... Oh, my God. Anyway, we cut over to dinner with Julie Madsen, and she's like, I want to marry you, Bruce. And Bruce is like, nah, go away. And he, she does. And that's the end of her. <laughs> yep. But during the whole dinner scene, he's hallucinating about Ivy, because I forgot to mention, she also pheromone both Batman and Robin at the auction. And now those two have been fighting over Ivy essentially since then. So Barbara sneaks out again with a bike and Dick follows her and apparently she's racing these bikes. So she gets in a race. One of the guys cheats. So she enters the race by paying the guy. Oh, I oh, s- yes, this race. Oh my god. I didn't see Dick pay to get into the race. Did Dick just come in at some point and say, I'm racing? He probably did that. And did you see the gangs like, they pan across? You probably didn't pick up on any of this. But these gangs are... I, th- I got one. The only one that I recognize, I think, were the... Um, oh, what the hell is it Clock, called? The Orange movie. Clockwork Orange, yeah. Clockwork Orange, yeah. Yes, there's other... Clockwork Orange. There's a few. I, I The other one I picked up on, I want to assume was one with the uh, wigs, was Amadeus. And the other one I want to say was like Warriors. Like an other movie. So they're just going Maybe. through 80s gangs, like movies, and just like, what is what they're doing? And the f- main oh. head guy who shoots the gun off in the air is Coolio. It's Coolio. Coolio. <laughs> and also, he just, he just looks at the camera, he just shoots the gun off, and he has no f- line. And I saw, I saw on the Ricky, like, he was supposed to come back as, like, Scarecrow or some shit. Oh, was he? Yes. It? They didn't mention his name or nothing. Nothing. So, it's really just Coolio. Like, <laughs> what am I watching right now? Okay, get, get back to Robin and that girl. We're not. No, it's Dick Grayson and Barbara <laughs> Pennyworth, I guess. Anyhow, in oh, the race there's... itself, I'm sorry. I just wrap how dumb this race is. Like, there's like every chance there could be an explosion going off. There's an explosion going off. There's green fire. It's the stupidest pyrotechnically this race you'll see. And one, the guy that antagonized uh, Barbara in the beginning cheats at the end and causes his friends to throw Molotov cocktails at Robin or Dick and Barbara, which makes them crash and slide off the bridge. They were all heading towards the end of that bridge, correct? Yeah, and that was the plan, was, yeah. Was, that was the race course, right? <laughs> yes. Why did it end in a drop? I don't know. I thought- because it just ends into a drop <laughs> off of a bridge. Unless they all knew about no, because the no, because there's multiple gangs. The, the, oh my god, this is stupid. Like they would have known where they're whatever. Anyway, this is, we get some Barbara backstory here. She actually her parents wait, had wait, died wait, hold in a car on, crash. Hold on, hold on. Because after that, after that near death accident, they just cut to this expedition of bullshit. What, oh, wait, what, what, happens, oh, to, what happens to the gangs? They. Like, did they fight the gangs? Did they scare them? Like, what happens to that? No, no, no. They So they both almost fall off the bridge, and Robin, like, catches the bridge with his foot and grabs her, and they're just hanging there. And they say, like, two-line quip, and then we cut back to Wayne Matthews. Yeah, there's literally no repercussion to the gangs. I guess not. <laughs> they even they even went out of their way to say that Barbara made a side bet with the one guy. Yeah. And no, they never followed through on any of that story. Either. Like that was so, it was so pointless. They're like, we got more ice puns to make. <laughs> oh man, you know, you have no idea how bad my head hurts right now, TJ. Now you know how I felt in Batman Sixty Six. I totally understand. Anyhow. So, we cut back to Wayne Manor, and apparently, uh, Barbara's parents died in a car crash because they can't have a bat hero without or- being orphaned, which, you know, I don't know why they changed their origin in the first place, but whatever. Then, she's, when she, her parents died, she got into bike racing, where she apparently made a muff, enough money to, so that she could come back to, come to America to take her age alien uncle away from his life of servitude. Uh, but... And, oh, and by the way, Alfred is dying. This is where we learn that he's dying. <laughs> Does she ever ask Alfred once if he likes it there? Nope. Does she ever just... She just assumes, I mean, it's not 
an unreasonable thing to think for Definitely a not. Pers- but he, a person of her age who just yeah. some guys you're just serving some guy your entire life to because at this point she doesn't know about Batman or Robin. No. She doesn't know about any of that that he's you know the father of heroes essentially. But he seems so happy and generally like pleased to be doing his job. I could see if he like had any yeah. kind of hint of like Man, I hate this. I hate this. Get me but, out of here. But he is he is dying. That, yes. But how and she he's no, like, hiding. And uh, maybe he told her. Or she says when? she notices it. No, she notices him, like, fall, like at points. But how? We never see her notice this shit. Like, how she know? Yeah, like, well. they, they were never talking back and forth, were they? It's like, he, she, he was surprised to see her there. He was surprised to see her there, but he has been supporting her. Okay. So yeah, they've been in contact. Okay. So, yeah, so there's that, and, um, so it's reasonable to think why she would think that way, but no, she's never actually talked to Alfred about any of it. Okay. Uh, anyway, cut over to Mr. Freeze's place, cell, His sister's whatever. Visiting. Not yet. He creates, he carves a music oh. box <laughs> at this point, which is <laughs> From these, from the show, the cartoon, the origin, it is that music box? It is, and they only did that scene to steal from that show because there's no other point to it. You don't, don't say steal. That's it. Sounds so sinister when you say steal. They stole. It's an homage. It's an homage. It's a bad homage. I mean, yeah, obviously it's a it's a lazily bad homage, but it's still I'm not gonna say they stole it. So it's it's they the stole show it. inspired them, TJ. No, they did not. They said, "Ooh, that origin looks cool. Let's just use it in our movies and destroy it." Yeah, it's an homage. And, nope, just, and destroy it. Steal. Don't be that fanboy. A, oh, my child is theft. ruined because you guys did something different than what I saw the first time. <laughs> don't, nope, don't be that guy. No, nope, no, nope. it, it's it, they destroyed it, and I didn't even see that episode until I was like twenty four. A little too old to watch those kind of shows, TJ. Yeah, I'm watching Batman and Robin. <sighs> Oh, yeah, this is where Mr. Freeze's sisters visit, and we get a cameo from the Riddler and Two-Face's outfits. And, you know, I'm just going to skip all these little notes here and just tell you that Poison Ivy and Bane break out Mr. Freeze. I wrote down in my notes, the guards are terrible. They're just, they're so, like, a recurring theme in these comic book movies. They're just so pointless. Uh, oh, what else happened? The guards, in Ar- the guards in Arkham Asylum, even in the comics, are bad. <laughs> they, oh, it, they all the and the bad guys always escape from Arkham. That's that's not a knock on the movie. That's comic accurate. Uh, Jesus Christ! Like, what's the point? Uh, then they just break. They just jump. Well, no. Bane tries to break the wall, but they can't. He can't because it's reinforced steel. So Mister Freeze freezes the wall, which causes it to explode. Bane, that Bane makes more sense. punches the wall one time. He can't get through it. Just one time. It's like that's this is where he makes the dumb always went to rise your pipes. Like it's just dumb. And then they jump out of... Uh, they would have died. They jump from 100 stories up down into an ocean. They don't hit terminal velocity and die at the water. Oh, my water. God. Th- not only if they... Okay, let's say they would have lived through that. Bane's, Bane's uh, support system would have fell off uh, through that fall. He would have been dead. And so would have left freezes. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, they, they give him his suit back. But now they he he he, he wants Ivy to get his wife. So Ivy and Bane. So they go back to his hideout as Mister Freeze goes gets the diamonds. The free because his suit's almost out of power. While Ivy and Bane go to get Nora, but they run into Batman and Robin, and there's a I, I was gonna say a big fight scene between the four of them, but it's really pathetic fight scene between the four yes. of them because it's Batman fighting Bane and then Ivy talking. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, to Robin. hold on. And the- Before they even start the fight, wait, when Freeze enters his as his hideout, right next to their door is a big switch that says Heat. Why would he have that in his hideout? So he knows when, how, where the tournament is. Why would he ever need that option? He dies a second to stop getting slightly cold. Why? So he knows where it is. So he knows where to turn it off in case that anyone ever, ever turns Why it off. Why is there an extra light switch by the front door? Where would you put your heat switch? Broken in the trash and no one else does it when I'm... Ugh. It's not Man. even a good homage to the 60s. At least the 60s were fun. This isn't fun. No, this is not fun at all. I'm like running out of steam here too. I know. Cuz I I'm looking at my notes and I'm like, wow, I still got all these notes left to go. Cuz there's so much to this. Like I Anyway, like if it was campy, it'd be a better movie. Okay, yeah, get back to your thing. This is a th- yeah, but it's just a chore right now. That's what Yeah. All right. So there's the fight. 
Bane fights Batman and Robin alternatively while Ivy tries to talk to them and, like, turn them against each other ultimately. Well, meanwhile, Mr. Freeze is stealing diamonds and freezing uh, cops and the whole time. And then eventually it gets to the point where Ivy turns Robin and it's Batman versus Robin and Batman throws him into a pool of ice cream that's somehow not melted since the heat was on. Oh, my God. I think, oh, my God. And then Freeze gets away, Ivy and Bane get away, and then Ivy tries to kill Nora Freeze by unplugging her. Um, back at the uh, Ivy's hideout, which somehow was transformed from neon, um, like, <laughs> warehouse to, like, an actual Turkish bath kind of thing, where <laughs> Mr. Freeze had turned half of it into, like, an ice oh palace. Oh my god, I just realized that. <sighs> And Ivy tells Freeze that Batman killed Nora. She has his, her, her necklace to prove it. And that's it. Freeze is going to freeze the world. <laughs> he doesn't even inv- investigate it. The nope, thing that's been driving her. him this whole movie. Like, oh, I'll take your word on it, new lady I don't know, who's also a villain. Yeah. Well, their plan is stupid. Freeze is going to freeze the world. And then Ivy is going to, and him are going to rule the world together. because And they're, they're going to be the only two humans left. I don't know how Bane doesn't take exception to that. Because he's standing right behind <laughs> her, what she's saying. Well, remember, he's dumb, first of all. Uh, and 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 two, if Mr. Freeze freezes the world, all the plants are gonna die. Yeah, they, these are the worst duo to have, like to have the end of the world. Con- like, no, this like they don't jive well. And then Poison Ivy has a miniature Seymour in a glass tube. So yeah, it's not it's not called Seymour, by the way. It's a miniature Seymour. It's Audrey two thousand. No, it's a miniature yeah, Seymour. Seymour's a guy who holds who nurtures Audrey. Audrey. Look, everything else is off brand in this movie. Why isn't that? Suddenly, Seymour. We should watch that movie. And we learned that Alfred has a convenient illness that just just happens to be the one that Mister Freeze cured. <laughs> right? Oh man, so convenient. Not AIDS or some British bullshit. No, it's just the same. McGregor, McGregor syndrome. That's what's called. Yep. Alfred had also recorded a scene earlier. Are you, are you and, skipping through everything? Well, no, I forgot that from like 15 minutes ago. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. He recorded uh, a CD earlier and now he gives it to Barbara to give to his, to find his brother who apparently is a traveling like diplomat for India or something and he can't seem to find him. So now it's up to Barbara to find him and give him the CD, but she's not allowed to look at it. Why? First, at first is his brother a thing in the, in the comics? Not that I know of. Oh my god. So why this man who's been serving Bruce Wayne for so Long, now brings up his brother and trusts his brother who he can't find with Bruce Wayne's secrets. Yeah, because only family can be trusted. Oh my god. The man he cannot find. Anyway, we cut over to the observatory again, where they we're actually having the reveal of the telescope. And this is where Ivy um, Pheromones, or Commissioner Gordon's, to take the keys to GCPT headquarters, where there are going to be no police there at all to stop her from coming in the front door, even with the keys. Go up up on the roof and have Bane tear off the bat signal. That's correct. Okay, I was just clear <laughs> on that one. You see how we all, how you, you and I both have our own questions that have no logic nor answers to them. Well, she's even stupid because she steals it for a stupid reason. We'll get to that <laughs> later. Though. Oh man. Um. Uh. Memories number three. Bat- Bruce is talking to Alfred, and he has more childhood memories. <sighs> And then Barb Barbara decides that she's gonna hack into Alfred's secret C D because apparently that's how you hack things, just by typing passwords over and over again. <laughs> and she's the, you get the right one. For knowing her 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 uncle so well, she is terrible at guessing his password. Uh, uh yep. is is it Alfred? No. Uh is is it England? She types in England. What the f- would it be England? Uh, I don't know. And then when she guesses I mean, the password, what? Then she t- types in her mother's name when she learned literally like <laughs> what a half hour ago that she was given a, that she was called something else. Oh, and then when an access is allowed, you did realize how sexual the thing sounded. Uh huh. I, like, I did. But mm, access allowed. Like, oh my god. What Anyway, Barbara discovers that Bruce is Batman, essentially. Uh, but there's a Robin signal in the sky now. She went through all the trouble of breaking into GCPD, tearing off the bat signal oh so, so she could put a Robin signal. Why didn't she just grab another signal and use it there? If you're going to break into... It's just a spotlight with a thing on it. Yeah. She got. She could have gotten so, a hold of so much information in there. No, it's like a good spotlight and get one at Walmart. About how- and why does the telescope that... Bruce Wayne is donating to this run on crystals. 
What? Why does the telescope that Bruce Wayne de- donated to the observatory run on crystals or diamonds? That that Why? is a really bad power source because you can run out of that shit real quickly. What? Well, why does a telescope <laughs> need diamonds? At, why does a telescope need an uh, energy source at all? It's just a lens, correct? Really powerful lens? I am so broken right now, TJ. This is a, I watched this over two nights, an hour each night, and each hour felt like four hours. I swear to you. This is really draining. Anyway, Barbara discovers the Batcave, and she's, she, you know, spins in a thing for a little while, and then Alfred comes on the computer and uh, say a tutor alert. Oh. And then... I, upgrade, I, 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 I uploaded my... F- brain algorithm to the computer. That's not how that shit works. And so he anticipated that Barbara was going to find the Batcave and made her a suit because I guess he's the one that makes all the suits. Yeah, for, Kim, first off, he's the worst at this. He like he showed everyone in these movies the Batcave. Yep. He sucks. He's awful. Uh, yeah, and the suit, like I, th- I wrote my notes, I am dying, but I still have time to make this suit before I start becoming bedridden. Right. What? But you know, we we had the Batman and Robin a butt suit earlier, so we have to get a Batgirl butt yep. suit in this one too. We get her bullets to butt and breast suit in here. Anyway, Poison Ivy lives in a flower chair now. Uh, is that the all the uh, Aubrey two? Audrey two? It's called the Audrey two. The Seymour two, I guess. <laughs> Seymour two. I hope the viewers hate uh, you more than they hate me. <laughs> anyway, what, uh, see, Robin had it like it's all plant now. Like what happened to Freeze's section? It's over in the corner. <laughs> a little icebox in the corner. I get no respect. I can't. I can't. I get no respect. I, no, I can't do it. Anyway, Robin kisses Poison Ivy because I guess he just wanted to kiss her because he really didn't need to kiss her because he got the information he wanted out of her and she's wearing rubber lips so he can't die from her poison kiss. So I guess he. Huh. I guess Chris O'Donnell just. I guess Chris O'Donnell really just wanted to kiss him with Thurman. Yeah, what's the point of that? You're right. So I mean, he could have not done it. But he did it anyway, and it doesn't work. But she throws him into the pool that's sitting in front of her for some reason, and he starts drowning in in seaweed for some reason. And that's his big fight. Is uh huh. And then Batman comes in, and he's like, "I'm useless too," and gets wrapped up in vines. Ah. Uh. And th- and then I guess Barbara was studying Batman movies, the other Batman movies, because she breaks in through a skylight now. Batgirl breaks in through the skylight, and it's Batgirl versus Ivy because, you know, we can't have the men fighting the women. In, at all. Oh, man, I hate this. Yep. Let's, let's nerf we, Batman and Robin by making one drowning in seaweed and the other one plants and have this. And just have, so we can have Batgirl fight uh, the poison Ivy, and so we can't have, because we can't have a guy hitting a woman. Oh, man. And you're right, because actually, for the whole movie, she never fights anyone. No, she talks to them the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to kiss you, or I'm going to have Bane slap you around a little bit. Oh, yep. my God. Yep. Anyway, Batgirl <laughs> knocks her, beats her up and knocks her into her, into her flower chair, and she comically says, curses, and that's the end of Poison Ivy, I guess. She, at the, I, I didn't remember the end of this movie. Thought I thought she was dead there. Yeah, because like the plant, like quote unquote, like clo- it closes on her, right? And like, yeah. okay, yeah, does she die? Like, that's it. And, I don't know. We don't see her to the end of the movie. Yeah, so. it's like, and then we get the stupid uh, line where Barbara says, "I'm Batgirl," and oh. Batman's like, "That's that's not PC. You bad person or bad woman? Shut right, up." First- you're Batman. Like, that's not PC then, right? And like, they go for this whole woman empowerment angle with Batgirl while they're doing the complete opposite with Poison Ivy, and it just doesn't no. work. It's just, it's poorly done, yeah. and it tries too hard to do it, and it doesn't work even in the slightest. You make them, everybody feel like they're stupid. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Freeze is freezing the city at this point. I wish I had more to add it on to that, because you're right, like... Poison Ivy is a straight sex symbol. And then, like, mm-hmm. yeah, Batgirl will f- this movie. Anyway, Freeze is Freeze in the city, and he uses his porky... Well, no, Batman uh, and Robin and uh, Batgirl come driving up the street in the various vehicles that you can buy at Kmart right now. Kmart, like, that's the old thing. Uh, question. 97. It was. It was big. Batwoman and Batgirl, what's the difference? Like, who are they? Uh, Batgirl is Barbara Gordon. She is Commissioner Gordon's daughter. Batwoman is Kate Kane. She is actually, well, depending on what continuity you want to go with, she is, in recent, more recent continuity, she is Bruce Wayne's cousin. Okay. 
and she is a lesbian. She's like the one of the major LGBT. No, no, is she uh, full lesbian or like a bi or something different? No, full okay. lesbian. She actually got kicked out of the military for lesbianism. Does that work? I don't know if it's not. It is now. <laughs> Your practice lesbianism, you're out of here. Okay. Well, yeah, that, because they found out that she was gay and that she, and you know the whole don't ask, don't tell thing. So she got kicked out of the academy. Well, I thought they dropped that recently. Whatever. This was in 2005. Okay, so that's when it was still on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at least that storyline of it. I know they did. They did the same thing in the most recent Batwoman TV show. Too. Really? Yeah, she was kicked out of it out of the academy because they found out she was gay. I don't, I don't get that. Man. That's so stupid. So, she's... She is... She was the main... Uh, like, she was the star of Detective Comics for a little while. Oh, really? In the 2000s, as Batman was Batman, and she was in Detective Comics. Yeah. She's like, she's, she's got a pretty decent storyline, too, with her, with her family and stuff like that. So Okay. But yeah, that's the difference. Batwoman in the 60s, though, was brought in. I'm, I think it was... I think she was also Kate Keen at that time, but I don't think... No, she she had to be something different. Well, who came first, woman or girl? Like, I actually want to say woman. Okay. But the woman they brought in was because they were worried about the uh, perception that Batman and Robin were gay. Yeah. So they brought her in so Batman would have a... a, a a female sidekick, and I think they even got married at one point just to dispel those illusions. That's fascinating. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I don't know why I always get this too like. Well, I, I mean, know. it's not like I'm not concentrating on it because it's bat, it's Batwoman and Batgirl. Yeah, you know, it's like just like like the different versions of Batman. Like there's Batwing. They're different names, yes. you know. So it's kind of like uh, it's hard. And besides, you know, it's Batman's counterparts are usually Robin or, or something yes. like that. Yeah, they're so not like Bat Boy. No, I think Bruce Wayne was actually Bat Boy. <laughs> he got turned into a he got turned into a baby at one point for a few issues. That's cute. Anyway, so they show up to the but to the observatory, but they're intercepted by Mister Freeze's porcupine car, which shoots spikes at them, and they take care of the minion, and they shoot their grappling hooks up into the observatory, get to the telescope, and then we get Batman 66 logic again. Which is? Uh, they need to unfreeze the city. Oh, yeah. But they can, they can only do it at the city with sunlight, but it's five hours to sunrise. But it's sunrise in the Congo, so if they redirect satellites to bounce the sun, the, you realize it doesn't work that way. It does <laughs> it sounds like your brain's breaking, TJ. Yeah, I hate it. They, it. they have to get it in there every one, every freaking time. Anyway, Mr. Freeze knocks his, knocks uh, Batgirl and Robin off of the telescope, and so Batman versus Robin. Meanwhile, oh, Bane Batman versus, fights... Uh, Freeze. Whatever, Bat, Batman versus Freeze. Well, Bane fights the two kids, essentially. And this should have been great. Like you said, This like you should have like wanted to see this. Well, no, because Bane chokes Batgirl on Robin, puts him on the ground, and they kick his pipes out, and then he shrinks to a desiccated Fuck. beat. And that's the end of Bane. Like, I hate that you said that, because it's that's what happens. That's Bane and Bat... Oh, my God. And then Batman tries to thaw the city, but Mr. Freeze uses freeze bombs to blow up the territory and the telescope. So, no, the world can't be saved. But, you know, it's a good thing Dick Grayson and Barbara Pennyworth are computer geniuses because they can access the satellites without the telescope. Uh, <laughs> and they re they redirect everything so that it they can thaw Gotham and the day is saved. And you think that would be the end of the movie. No. But it's not. Batman convinces Mr. Freeze that he's a good guy. Well I like this. And I Mr. like Batman's little speech to warm <laughs> to oh, fuck it. I just not a pun I meant to say, but to warm Freeze's heart. I did like this. Like, it seemed Batman-y. Yeah, it was a good speech, except Mr. Freeze just so happens to have two vials of the cure Batman needs to save Alfred in his suit. He hands them to him, and now Alfred's going to be magically saved. But we're not quite there yet, because we have to cut back to Arkham, where Ivy's still alive and in solitary confinement. They give her a flower, which is stupid, because you never should give Poison Ivy any plants. 
And anyway, they put her in the same cell as Mr. Freeze when he learned that she tried to kill her wife earlier. I don't think you're supposed to do that. Yeah. He should, they put him in him full, full Freeze costume into this desecrated lady's cell. And it looks like he's going to, like, torture her for a yeah, long time. What's his line say? Shit, I had it written down. Uh, Winter has come at last. Like, he's like, man, he's going to do some really gnarly stuff to her. Uh-huh. And this is... But, you know what? That's dark. Mr. Freeze's, Mr. Freeze's convenient cure works. And but, guess oh, what? But didn't Batman just, like, just have a speech like, you're a good guy, man. You are a good dude. Did he not just say that, like, a minute ago? Well... He said you're a good doctor. You can help save a life. Doesn't mean you can't be and go destroy a life. That's too. awful. Anyway, Alfred lives. Because, you know, the contrivances of movie telling. Uh. Storytelling. Whatever. Anyway, but Bruce tells Barbara she's going to go back to school. School. Dick says she's not going to win that argument. And the Bat family is born. And then they all run towards the camera as a family. Finally, the end. I would say yay. I mean, my brain's so broken. Oh, man. That was the hard one. Uh, that was probably to date the worst movie we've reviewed. Yes, without yeah. a doubt. And we've watched Supergirl. And Howard the Duck. And yep. The Punisher. With, what's his name? Uh, Dolph yeah, Lundgren. we watched some bad movies, and this is the worst one to date. Yep. And it might be the worst one for a while. And I didn't think yep. I was going to say that about that. I Anyone who's ever had arguments with me about Batman and Robin, how many times I defended this movie. If you're listening to this, I genuinely, <laughs> full-heartedly apologize. Because I would def- This was a hill I was die on back in the day. Like, this is such a good movie, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. I just sat here and watched it, then reviewed it. <laughs> we just, we spent four hours on this movie in the last two days. Yeah, yeah. Four hours no one should ever do in their life. I, I, I apologize for saying this was a decent movie to a good movie. Yeah, because it really, really, really isn't. I there's there's not much of anything that's a saving grace. Uh, I, I can't no. think of anything positive to say besides some of the uh, performances. Some of the things, some of the things that we've already yeah. said, and we kind of got that out of the way in the exactly. beginning. Exactly. Then we just hate we just hate review that. <laughs> like some of the performances in this movie are decent from what they had to work with. But still, yeah. like this movie's so bad, it, it stopped them from making a sequel. It stopped them from just, it stopped Batman from being Batman until two thousand and whenever Batman Begins came out, two thousand five, I guess, right? Yeah, five, I think. That's how bad this movie was and is. That's a long time for being a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> Even nowadays, uh, there are good movies like within a year or two. Like that's horrific. Yeah, it was not fun. Not fun. In the slightest. God. Sorry. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm curious what your score is. I will always stand by the fact that there's no ones and there's no tens. So, with that being said, because there are some things, very little things, that redeem this movie. I'm <laughs> but not enough to Supergirl level, so I'm going to have to give this a 2 out of 10. I'm actually in agreement with you. What? I gave this a 2 out of 10, too. No way! Yeah. <laughs> I gave it a 2 out of 10... As my objective score, okay. as a Batman fan, it's a negative eight. Oh, I'm not even a fan like you. I still feel betrayed and offended. Uh, God damn, this movie sucks. Just how they did Bane so dirty and bad. They destroyed three <laughs> they great villains. Yes. Three great villains. Yes. It's bad enough when they destroyed... Well, they didn't even destroy two in the last one, but they didn't do those two as much justice as they should have in the last one. But they movie. didn't, like... I can't, I can't think of a good metaphor for that. They didn't do them dirty. They didn't. No, no, no. They did a, they did a uh, lighthearted comedic take yes. on those yes. ones. But, but this one, they completely destroyed three mm-hmm. characters. They butchered everything they, they got their hands on. They did. 100%. They broke this movie. They broke me. I can't say enough how bad and, and how much of a chore this was. Even the Tim Burton's last one was it was Batman Returns. It wasn't, it was, I can't, TJ. I hope you all freeze in <laughs> hell. Yeah, yeah, all of you freeze in hell. But we go from that Melcony, Mel, Melcony, Melcony, how do you say that word? Say, say, say the sentence. 
we we go from that Melancholy scene to Melancholy, Melancholy, Mel, Melanc- huh? Melon, Melancholy, Melancholy, Melon? Nope, nope. <laughs> well, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> from that scene to I, the viewers are like, God, these guys are idiots. Why are we listening to this? <laughs> it's it's Melancholy idiot. I can't even say it. <laughs>